We are back working on Connie, our 77 Toyota Celica. We have our new custom Trans Cross member. And that means it's finally time to get Beamsy ready for final install, I guess we can call well, it. First final install. First final install. And that means a new clutch from spec, as well as some ITBs that Moose is fondling there. Is and even a timing belt that he's wearing around his neck like a hip hop guy. A bit of bling. You're not going to be using that today, Moose, but uh, how does it feel to see your hard work turn into an actual hard part? My precious. Yeah. It makes me very, very happy. That's right. Well, this is the uh, custom Transcross member from Excessive Manufacturing that fits our late first gen Celica. <laughs> we explained all that in a previous episode. Go check it out. But man, it's exciting to see something that was kind of a hacked together, welded up bodge job on our part to turn into something rather sexy. It, it, it's actually really, it does feel really, really good. And it looks, it looks proper. It does look proper. And there's even a little note on there from, uh, from Rich and the guys at Excessive, which it's important to notice that. All right, Mr. Moose, uh, where are we starting on this job? Well, we have the original ITB and manifold assembly from a, a 4AG blacktop. And what we have to do is remove the individual ITBs from the manifold, which we did earlier. We unbolted everything. It gets pulled off so that we can then adapt this to our beams with a rather nice machined adapter from uh, Excessive. Yeah, well, let's uh, zip these puppies over there and we'll start bolting them up. Sounds good. So this black plastic adapter here from Excessive Manufacturing is designed to bolt our uh, 4AG ITBs up to the beams engine. It's a very nice piece. Uh, I like the fact that it acts as a heat barrier too, which is kind of cool. And it has uh, vacuum ports. I don't know if you can really see them, but there's, it's pre-drilled for vacuum ports along the bottom, which we'll need. And uh, it should allow us to just bolt these puppies right up. The one challenge being that there's some bosses on the top side that interfere with the fuel rail. It doesn't fit. Make it fit, Moose, make it fit. I need some big tools. What are we gonna do here? Show us what the problem is. The problem is, is when I try to get this to mount, the fuel rail bangs up against this mounting boss. Right. So we're gonna take the die grinder, we're gonna clearance this a bit so that it actually bolts up. Because we don't need that boss anymore. That's 4AG stuff that's not relevant here. So, get out the Sharpie. Do some Sharpies. Do some Sharpie work, Moose. Show the people how a Sharpie works. There you go. Now, the die grinder. Dun, dun, dun. dun. Look at that, no, no broken bits, and it looks all pretty. So Take far. that, internet. In typical excessive manufacturing style, they include instructions and all the hardware you need to use their ITV adapter. Even specifies where the long and short bolts go, so our semi-literate friend here, Mr. Moose, can get the hardware in the right hole. I think I can figure this out. I'm pretty sure you can. Look at that, in fact, he's got a bunch of them figured out already, doesn't he? Yeah. Relax, eagle-eyed interneters. We know we left the shop towels in the intake ports. This is just a test fit of the ITBs, then they're coming off for ultrasonic cleaning because they've got 30 years of grease and grime inside them. Now, can we get back to discussing more important things, please? And that's already looking pretty sexual, don't you think? Oh, this, you know something? I don't know what it is. I mean, a standard manifold. Oh, it's a standard manifold. Yeah. ITBs. So sexy. It is beyond sexy. Yes. It's just, it's so, such a serious, serious thing. Serious, serious thing. They're kind of the cleavage of the, of the automotive world, aren't they? they They're are. like side boob for car guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know you love a good side boob. Oh, no, I, I do like, I also was thinking there's a little bit of, they're also kind of the camel toe. The camel toe, there. yeah, that's, that's not a bad analogy either. You know, yeah. I, I kind of lean towards camel toe personally. Yeah, I'm a fan. And then this is the, to me, Oh yes, maybe that's the side boob right there. That's definitely side boob. Mm, we'll talk about we'll talk more about those in a moment. All right, Mr. Moose, let's throw those air horns on there. Sounds good. By the way, these are uh, these are from Battle Garage. I ordered them on the internet. It's amazing what you can find on the internet. These are SQ Engineering 100 millimeter long velocity stacks, and uh, I went for this size because you can get them in a bunch of different lengths. But I went for this size because uh, Matt Panic from 
uh, well, they have a team called Shah Dynasty that uh, drifts and he has a Celica with this motor in it. He did a bunch of testing and found that the 100 mil length makes the most power on this engine. So thanks Matt for that uh, piece of intel. And because we want this engine to live and not suck in big pieces of dirt, I also ordered this Piper Cross air filter and backing plate from Battle Garage as well. Piper Cross is a very well known filtration uh, company for ITV setups like this. So this plate that holds the filter in goes between the air horns and the individual throttle bodies. And then Moose with his two left hands will bolt them in place. So the whole spacing didn't quite line up perfectly. Step it. One size over, gain a bit of wiggle room. Should be good to go. Yep. The throttle position sensor on these 4AG uh, ITBs are notorious for braking and shipping, and as you can see, ours is cracked. So, just notice that. Time to order a new one, I guess, huh? Is it just me, or does it sound like Moose is down, down in the bayou playing on one of those uh, scrub boards? I, don't have, I have no rhythm, so Apparently. I'm very white. <laughs> Time to put the Piper Cross filter adapter, sandwich it between the ITBs and the air horns. Velocity stacks. Whatever the British people like to call them. Although these are not British, these are uh, made in Australia, I believe. SQ Engineering is from Australia, Mike. Look at those sexy, shiny stacks, everybody. Time to cover them up with a... Uh, Big black filter. Pipe across. And they do sell this with the hardware that fastens them to these, this tab. So we'll go grab those. Oops. Looks like our friends at Battle Garage and SQ Engineering actually include hardware to bolt up the velocity stacks. And Dave being as organized as he normally was, there's a little bag sitting off to the side. Yeah, that's all me. Put it on me, everybody. It is all you, Dave. Nothing's ever moved. Everything's well. about you, you, Dave. You sound like my wife right now. All right, well, either you go cook me some dinner or you bolt some uh, stuff up to the velocity stacks. Make, make your choice. <laughs> uh, there's a third there, but I'm not going there. <laughs> no, no, please don't. So these are actually much nicer bolts. They're, they're stainless and... Uh, button head. Button head, so a nice low profile look to them. Look at that. It's almost like they were meant to go in there. It's almost like they were the right length for yeah, the job. The right length, the right finish, the right shape. Everything a growing boy would want. Somebody before us thought this through, Moose. Yes. So and, and we decided to rethink it for them. Well, and, and then go back to make. We it right. rethunk it because somebody was unaware of the packages they opened. Yeah. Well. Anyway. By the way, this is not a paid advertisement for Battle Garage. I paid full price. They're just cool dudes that uh, stock a lot of stuff for these old Toyotas and Beams engines. In fact, that's where I got my timing belt too. So if you need a timing belt for a Beams engine, look them up. Look everybody, this is explicit content. They may get banned from the internet for being so explicit. Enjoy it while you can, boys and girls. Now put your pants back on. Now that we've shown you some explicit content, it's time to cover it up. Don't want you guys to get too excited nor do we want to ingest any large engine destroying objects. So, you know, for show I'll take this off, but when I'm at the track, I'm definitely gonna run a filter. These filters flow very well. They really don't rob any power. I uh, put a little, the little Zeus adapter, basically like a clip. Yep. And it gives a quarter turn faster on a plain plate and we can... Nice. Off she goes, we got a... Uh... It's nice, relatively quick release uh, air filter assembly. That's right. So when I when I hard park, two seconds to pull this thing off there. ITBs are on. ITBs are on. What's next? Well, let's do the time belt. So if we were saving it, I'd say we detention the belt and <laughs> take it up properly, but we're not. So that goes away. In moose style. It goes away quickly and angrily. Okay, so step one on the timing belt job is to set the motor to top dead center. So there's two sets of marks. There'll be a mark on the uh, timing belt cover, and there should be a corresponding mark on the crank. 
and every other rotation, and there's a the mark there, should correspond also to a mark on the on the actual cam pulleys and they do or the cam gears. Yeah. And they both point straight up. Yeah, you can see those are nicely lined up top. So we are officially at top dead center. So there's probably a specialty tool they can use to hold the crank pulley so that it, you know, the, the crank doesn't rotate. Or you can just do a moose style with a big old impact gun. Yeah, exactly. Well, that may not do it. We may wow. do the plan B. Take two with a new battery. Oh, like butter. A little bit of pull combined with a bit of... Don't need a puller tool. You just need a moose and a dead blow hammer. There you go. And Mr. Oh, the Woodruff key is... Still in there? Yeah, it's oh, well, we can leave we'll him leave in there. there. He doesn't need to go out. Leave, leave him alone. He's in his home. Don't break anything, moose. I'll try. Or the people of the internet will spot your error and they will chirp you mercilessly about it. Well, they will anyways, because guess what? I've never worked on this motor before, so guess yeah. what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to undo the wrong thing at some point. Something will go wrong here. Yes, yeah, so and I'll be chirped for being a clown. For being a hack. For not knowing what the hell I'm doing, and I will gladly accept that because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Well, you know, it's a it's an engine with an engine cover and a timing belt. I think we can handle it. Yeah, I've, I've done this before, maybe not necessarily on this specific motor. Yeah, we've done a few dozen timing belt changes in our day. Yes, including the hardest part is when they're in the car with full accessories. Yeah, that's a nightmare, isn't it? Yes, that is. It's interesting because you kind of want, sometimes you wonder or if you don't wonder why some of the Japanese manufacturers like Toyota are, are so reliable. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is attention to detail. And when I've done, I've done time belts before a number of times, and normally what you do is once you get the car, put it top dead center, the crank's top dead center, the, the cams are top dead center, you'll normally mark the belt on the two cams and the bottom of the crank so that when you go to slip the new belt on, you can make sure the marks line up that the crank hasn't rotated out of rotation to the put to the uh, cams, etc. A time about attention to detail is that the the replacement time belt from Toyota is already pre-marked to line up with top dead center on the two pulleys. Yeah. And the bottom has been marked yeah. where it's supposed to line up with top dead center on the crank. I've never seen a belt marked like that before. Nor have I. And again, normally I use a white paint pen. Yeah. I'll just I'll put a paint pen on the old. I'll lay it up against the new. I'll transfer the marks across so the teeth line up. So I know that I, I maintain the phase alignment of the parts. Huh. So I don't have to mark it. I, had, I, was, I was asking you for a paint pen, which you, you didn't have. I had yeah. a Sharpie. It was all for naught. Huh. Well played, Toyota. Yeah, it smarted the moose. Not that hard. No, but they did it anyway. And as you can see with the engine cover off, I think all we have to do is remove the tensioner, which is that shiny silver part there. It's hydraulic, so there's a hydraulic piston here which rotates the tensioner, keeping tension on the belt. So we'll pull that off, that'll detention the belt, and we can pull the belt off and slap the new one on there. That's the plan. So it looks like to get the tensioner removed, we have to take this little cover off, which will let us get the, uh, the piston out of the tensioner out of the little divot that it sits in in there. Yeah, basically the piston, the hydraulic piston tensioner sits up on this, so. Pull that it, off, we should be able to slide it out from there, you think? That is the thought. Okay. Man, it's a whole new world here, Dave. Well, we're, we're trying new things. That's kind of the fun part about Connie, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. So that... Ah, that freed up the tensioner. Yeah, but well, I allowed it to slide because it was sitting yes. in the divot. Don't forget the way it's routed. Yeah, that's... We took photos beforehand on our cell phones out of paranoia of not being able to figure out how to route the belt. Never a bad idea to take photos as you go, everybody. Or in our case, video. There we go. They even have like a mark in the metal casting that line up with the line on the belt there. There's a belt, There's line, a line and a mark on the cam. Look at that. All the lines are lined up. Yep. On both sides. So, now it's time to route this sucker. Actually, I should probably reset the tensioner at this point. Yeah, you gotta put like a grenade pin into the tensioner to hold the piston in place. Yep. Yeah. There we 
we go. So that should hold the piston down, right? Yeah, there it is. The piston's been compressed. So with the grenade pit in there, we can put the tensioner back on the motor. It's not applying any tension to the belt until we remove that pin, obviously. Yeah. So we're just gonna bolt everything back up, route the belt, and pull the pin! We found that by taking off this idler pulley, uh, it let us get the belt on more happily, more easily. Otherwise, we're sort of trying to stretch it over that pulley, which was not ideal. So we'll just pop it off, drop the belt in place, and pop it back in. Not a big deal. Looks like it's good on the lower mark. We're good up here on the cam gears. It's good on the actual casting marks. Yep. I think it might be time to pull the pin. It may just be. You want the honors? Sure. I need a pair of pliers. <laughs> gotta yell, clear. All right, time to pull the pin, Mr. Moose. Oh, boom. So, should we check the tension on this thing? How's it feel? Oh yeah. Feels good? Feels good. I think that might be job done. That was about as painless as a timing belt can be, I'd say. What's that you say? We're long overdue for a disco interlude? Well, I think I agree. So get your groove on as Mr. Moose folds down that front end cover. You should hear it all. I'm happy to make time for your feelings. But you have to admit, I already do. Let's just break it down to you and me uptown. Dancing all around. While we've got Moose's giant die grinder handy, we're gonna clearance the, uh, the oil pan brace area here. There's no oil that travels through this part of the, the bottom of the engine. This is really just aluminum bracing and it won't clear the steering rack. So we've got to clearance it, which means more flying aluminum chips. Have at it, you savage. Mr. Moose, you made a lot of progress throwing chips around my garage here. Yep. And it looks like it's pretty much done. A little bit of finish work here. Uh, the uh, the burr uh, bound up with the loom, so we, and then it wore, basically wore out. So yeah. Pick up another burr, and we'll just finish off a little bit here, and then a little bit of I think we'll do a bit of sand work with the belt sanders to clean things up and look pretty. But yeah. The and, worst of it is over. Yep. And then not, definitely more than enough to do a test fit uh, yeah. for the steering rack. So next, ep next episode, we will do that test fit. We'll bolt up the cross member, we'll put in the steering rack, and we'll make sure that we have enough clearance here for everything. And that means it'll be time to put the clutch of flywheel in. I know we said we were gonna do it this episode, but we didn't get there. So next episode, spec clutch, stock resurface flywheel, transmission goes on, engine goes in the engine bay, cross member goes in for the transmission, and if that all looks good, then we'll really start to attack the steering system, including getting the rack in there, getting the column in there. I've got a magic little extension to join the two of them, so lots more to come. Until then, keep on dancing with that disco music, people. Listen to me. I've tried so many times to tell you this is as good as I can be. Why is it? Just break it down to you and me uptown, dancing all around till the disco ball.